we're going to do a little personal improvement to the Incra fence system right after this. I'm Rick and this Shut the heck up you stinking boosters. <laughs> this is the shack. Hello and welcome back to the shack. In this video, I'm going to kind of go over my personal preference in regards to the stops on the Incra fence system. Again, this is personal preference. If you like the idea, definitely consider the upgrade. But for me, it just in my mind, and I am a little weird when I look at things, it gives me a little more confidence and reassures me that when I move the fence system to the stops, I believe it should keep the alignment a little bit better, just in my mind, okay? We're gonna readjust the camera. I'm gonna go over what I have now and what we're going to do. Now, this is my current setup. I have a bolt with the T-nut back here and just this flat washer. That's all that stops this large piece here for the fence. Now, in my mind, that little contact area just isn't enough to assure me that it is going to keep its alignment. So that's why I am choosing to do what I am doing. These are the floating stops that originally come with the kit. I don't have the bolts, washers, or the T-nuts because I chose to use them on my power switch. As you see here, these are the bolts, washers, and the T-nuts are in here that I used to mount this power switch versus factory, they were actually drilled and tapped into the rail. I didn't want to drill into these rails, so I harvested or stole the bolts and T-nuts out of that to use on this. So I ordered another set with the addition of four more bolts, washers, and T-nuts. This bag, I am going to use retrofit my overhead dust collection that was factory drilled and tapped into the back rail. So this way I don't drill into the rails at all. I am just going to fabricate a piece of metal, three or four inches, I think three should be, but hope maybe four, uh, to put the bolts and T-washer in there, tighten it down, and I have a piece of metal underneath here sticking out that I could drill and tap and mount the, uh, no, I'm gonna go underneath because I don't want, if it's on top, it would interfere with these. So if I mount it underneath, It'll be below and it won't interfere with the T handle. So I'm going to mount it, drill and tap below the bracket and mount it that way. So I got four because I want two uh, bolts per bracket, I guess. So we're going to focus on the floating stops. So because I don't like this, I just don't like the idea of a very minimal surface that contacts the base here of the positioner base. I am choosing to use the floating stops as permanent stops for the base to go back and forth. So when I slide it forward, it's gonna stop right here. That's gonna be my zero. When I go back 20 inches, that's where it's going to stop in the back. That'll rest against this stop here. That will be when I need to make the full capability of my table saw. I can get a 52 inch cut, but I have to slide the whole base back. If you wanna know more about that, I'll put a link to the video up there. This just makes more sense to me in my mind that I have all this surface now contacting this versus just that little spot right there. Now, the floating stops are basically on the bottom. And again, that's not enough stopping for me. If I mount it this way, put the hole even with the slot here, this is hanging down, that's a catch hazard. Walk by, I can catch something on that. So for me, it makes much more sense to put it right here bolt washer through there, mount it there, it's going to stop it there, and I have, again, this whole area of the surface here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take the existing nuts, bolts out, and this T-slot, slide them out. I am going to reset the base per factory setting. I'm going to make sure I'm at the spot I need to be, lock this down, then I'm going to reinstall the floating stop, which will be a permanent stop, on top here, 
Then we're going to go through the process of setting the fence again at 20, moving the whole thing back and getting my mark for the backstop to stop it against. And then we're just going to make a quick test cut just to make sure we're dialed in and we're good to go. So now we are set. So let's go back and I can show you how far back I can get. You can see that. Okay, I'm at zero. So if I open it up now, which I think, oh, I can't believe I did that. Now I know why. It won't allow this to go through, so I'm gonna have to take it off and put it on the side, so I gotta redo this whole thing now. Oh my goodness. I thought that was gonna work out. I didn't think I couldn't get this to go back where I needed it to be. Oh, crap. All right, well, it is what it is, right? Since things didn't go as planned because this is in the way, the uh, fence can't fly over it. I didn't think about that. This isn't an option. That's just not an option. It's not enough stop. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to mount it that way. But as you see, the hole doesn't match. So what I've done, see, it'll bypass underneath the fence. So it has to sit this way. What I've done, but there's a little punch right here. What I'm gonna do, Right along here, there's a line, and that matches the, the line, the bottom line, or the T-slot in the uh, rail. So between, where's that line? Right there. Between the bottom line and the hole, that's where that hole is punched, and this is centered between all this. I'm going to take a 3 8 drill, drill that out. This is aluminum. Take a file and file out that little, the little uh, peak that will end up being right here, flat on both sides. That way I'll be able to slide this up and down. I can push on the bottom, keep it flush, tighten it down, and it'll be flush with this, and it should work. And I just loosen this, move it out of the way, put that under, tighten it, and it'll be fine. And the main thing is the fence can still get past it. This is where I wanted it, but because the hole's not set right, that's why I didn't do it that way, I set it that way. And if I put the hole in the right place, this is hanging down, that's a catch point. I'll catch my pants or shirt or something on that, and I don't want that, so my option so I can keep it flush, keep it in true with the bottom of the rail here. I'm going to enlarge that. I'm just going to make a slot here. So I'm going to go over to the drill press, drill that out, get a file, file these edges flush so I have just a nice little slot there and it should work. This is the floating stop that I drilled, the three eighths on the bottom, so I have to file the little mountain, the little peak right there out. This is what it looks like once it's done, and I've checked it, so it will work. Now I've loosened this up, slid it out. I'm going to slide that one in, tighten it right there so I don't move this, so I don't have to readjust everything. I'm going to leave it right there, but I will have to readjust the backstop. So I'm going to just slide it from the other end. I'll have to go through where my stops are, slide it all the way here. So that will go there. Whoops, let me get past this. There we go. There, perfect. Slide it against that. See, now I got plenty of room. Push up again so it's all square. Tighten this up now. Perfect. Let me do the rest of these and I'll be right back. Well, this has been a challenge today, to say the least. As you saw, I screwed up big time. When I had the floating stop mounted to the top, when I moved this back to get the extended use, get the 52 cut out of it, and I went to slide this back, it hit the stop. So I like, I didn't think this through very well, did I, dummy? I had to rethink it, mount it on the side, and slot that hole so it slides up and down. And that way I could push it against the bottom here, push against the, the, bra the base of the positioner, tighten it down, and now it, it's really, really good. And I did this because I had more surface here to butt up against. In my eyes, that gave me more security. I was more assured that I'd keep it accurate. As I slid this forward, it had all this to butt up against versus just this little area that would hit on the washer itself. So I feel more confident this way. That's me, 
That's my anal weirdness going on. That's why I chose to do it this. Yeah, I had to alter this to make it fit, but because it wouldn't fit here, and if I put it underneath here, you only had the little tab part sticking up, and again, that wasn't enough for me to feel confident. This, I feel very confident that it will go right back there, sit right there, and it'll keep my accuracy. With that, we turn my attention back to realigning everything, and unfortunately, three times I had to do this from the positioner base itself. Took the LS positioner completely out, realigned the base, got it set at the proper distance, set this back in, lined everything back up, and it was screwed up. What I found out the second time I did it because it didn't work, I had to realign it again after the first time. When I went to tighten the T-nuts down here, the rail on that side, because I would tighten this side first, go to that side, it actually flexed out. I started scratching my head thinking, what the heck did I do now? After thinking about it a little bit, again, for the third time now, I took the positioner out of the positioner base and started from scratch. Basically, the bracket here, I had too far out. So when I pushed this one against the bracket here, against the rail, pushed that side out when I tightened it. So when I tightened that side, it was bringing it out and it was flexing out. So I unloosened the four bolts underneath here. If I measured the outside of this rail to the, to the outside of that rail, and I measured the bracket part here, I was a sixteenth of an inch wider. So I tapped this until it was in a sixteenth of an inch snugged it, thought that would be a good starting point, slid it back on, and then tapped a little bit more just to make sure if there's any more give or anything, any more variances, it was good. Then I began the process again for the third time and realigned it with my miter slot. Got that completely dialed in, it was perfect, it was great, my analness gets the best of me sometimes and it drives me insane, so I've been at it for four hours doing this thing three times now. Confident that this was once again lined up, I slid in the position. Now, I did have a few things that I must have missed or I didn't catch or just me being me screwed up again. The position itself, you see that up here, this is actually higher. When you set this up, and I don't know if I missed it the first time, how I did it, you're supposed to slide this in to about four inches. I got maybe five inches from the positioner itself to your fence. That way this, this uh, section here stays level. Pull that in, I loosen all this up again, put my little spacers underneath here on both ends, set the fence down, then tighten these bolts up, and I noticed this was up higher than it was the first few times and the very first time. This is actually higher somehow, and I noticed once I did all this, it does glide much more smoothly. Before, it was a little bit lower because as it would come out, it wasn't level, it was dipped. So when it's coming out, I could feel it binding just a little. I felt a little drag as it extended out and it wasn't as smooth. Now, it's like butter. So I'll, somehow, I screwed that up. So make sure you bring this position in about four to five inches. Then put your tab underneath here and just everything. I, I tighten this part First, make sure this is sitting down on these little spacers. That's all it needs to be, one on each end. Held it down, tightened this up. When that was tightened up, then I came back and the, the, uh, the guys here, I made sure they were flush with the rails here. Just held them down, tightened these up, tightened that side up, and then I readjusted my little, the guys that are inside here that actually hook to the rail to keep this from lifting up. So now, with that all realigned for the third time, and I notice a major difference, this is unlocked, finger, that just glides much, much better because I actually had it four to five inches, adjusted everything. Now it keeps this position part here level throughout the full extension. So that was one thing that was an improvement. Somehow, I kind of screwed up something else, but I fixed that also. With this, I thought was parallel with my miter slot. Being the third time, the first time I cut everything at two inches, measured it, 
and dialed it in so it got right there where it's pretty close, to dead on two inches. It's going to be within a couple of thousandths of an inch, literally. Well, this last time I got it all squared up, got this all setting, and as I was cutting, I felt drag going as this exited the blade. I don't know if you can I'll see if I, I may just get a picture to show you. Of, right along here, I got a little slight burn because on the up cycle of the blade as circling around, as it exited, I could, it was catching here. It wasn't gliding through smoothly. So if this was the blade, basically, the, I'm going to exaggerate it, basically the blade was kicked in, so it was dragging on this as it exited. So it wasn't exiting smoothly. You're supposed to have a slight relief. So what I did right here and here on either side of the slot, actually one covers the slot, I put two, two thicknesses, two pieces of masking tape, two pieces on this side, two pieces on this side. This actually covered the slot in the back that the bolt goes through. So I shimmed this part. So instead of it being like this, now this, I'm going to exaggerate again. <laughs> Let me go this way. Instead of it just being, if this is the blade exiting the fence, so now I kicked it out a little bit. So now as it exit, it's going to have a little more freedom. Two pieces of tape, two pieces of masking tape thickness. So I put a piece, put a piece here, did it. Not quite good enough. Put another second piece on top of the first piece. Now, when I went through, there's, this is the exit cut. There's no burn at all. It's perfect. The other side, it's perfect. No drag. It actually, now, instead of it binding on the blade as it exit, again, exaggerating. So now as it goes through the initial cut of the blade, it has relief back here and it's not binding. That took care of that. That was a little thing and I didn't want to go through the complete process of realigning. Easiest, simple way was just to put a little shim right here on this bolt, not on that bolt, because again, this was kicked in that way, so it's not kicking into, it's allowing for some relief as the exit. So that was good. And these are set, that this cut, these are an inch and a half. So let me get my, okay, I'm at zero. You can see that. So now, this was my last cut. Uh, 1501. 1.501. One thousandth of an inch off. That I can deal with. 1.5, 1.501, 1.5000, 1.501. Well, actually, 1.5000. It's perfect. So within one thousandth of an inch now. All up down here, that is perfect. So once again, finally, after three attempts, this is dialed and set in again. And I am more confident that my stops will keep the alignment properly because I got more surface. Because of me doing it multiple times, this is actually better now. It glides better. It doesn't bind. It is even more aligned. I absolutely love this. We are finally, finally done. I'm telling you, four, four or five hours out here getting this realigned three different times just wears on you. The thing is, just make sure you take your time, follow directions. How I miss these little things, I don't know. Having a solid top makes it very difficult to go underneath to align it, so I had to figure out some, some things. Somebody else may be able to figure out something better. The thing is now, it glides better. It is aligned. The fence is good now. No binding. It, the cut, I could tell, glides right through. There is enough of an angle that that glides through without any drag hitting any of the upcycle from the blade. Exiting very, very smoothly now. Yeah, 300% better if that's possible. These are just minimal, minor upgrades for my analyst. This is what I have to do sometimes to my things so I feel more confident with them. They're probably fine without because you don't move the centerpiece often. 
unless maybe you run a cabinet shop and you have to kick it out to do, because in the cabinet shop we always cut full sheets. You never used anything on the ground, cut them down and more manageable. It's take the full sheet, set it on, and cut, start cutting. We never did that. I, that's other people have done that. I've never been taught to do that before. It's so always use your table saw. You just had to have the capabilities. That's why I had to get a 52 inch. I'm just used to them. Now everything is realigned. My stops are more confident. They are solid. Love my little cradle I put up. I got that massive magnifying glass. I can see that mark so very clearly. Matter of fact, I've used it so much. Yeah, it's dead now. I gotta go charge it. This thing is dialed in. I mean, it just, it glides better than it did before. I can't believe I missed that little adjustment. And that's my little update, little struggles. If you have a 52 inch, something maybe you wanna consider with your stops, but just make sure you don't go through the same struggles I've done as far as screwing up the alignment, get everything tweaked -y, but yeah, it's all good to go now. Just take your time, read through the directions, and make sure you follow up, because I don't know how I missed that four inches or I, or I don't know. I don't know how I did that, but it's good now. We are done with this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. Take back your shack. <laughs> for your sanity. Make sure you're subscribed. I have a new tool coming in. I will have an announcement before this video even comes out, I think, so that would be after the fact. But just make sure you're subscribed. A lot of things going to be happening, a lot of things changing. Got a new tool here that I'm working on. And I'm starting to learn. Another tool coming in is going to help me do some other projects. Yeah, we're getting all geared. I got a stack of cutting boards there that I got to finish for Christmas and gifts. Yeah, everything's right now geared for Christmas. I've already got some stuff already made. So we are done. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next video.